Ahoy there, my name's Beth, and this is the story of how I renovated my 1904 Dutch sailing barge. Well, this week I haven't really done very much, but let's have a look at it anyway. This week started, like most weeks, with a big tidy up. I'd left all of this wood in the cockpit just to really keep it out of the way and I don't have much space down below but now is the time to clear it all away, at least to hide it on the side deck. Last week I talked about some water in the engine room and that's really because I hadn't kept the gutters clean but also I don't actually have a functioning bilge pump. So the next job this week was to fix the bilge pump and pump out all of that extra water. So these are really hard to get onto the uh, the fitting. So I'm going to put in some boiling water to try and make it a little bit more flexible to try and get it on. Even with the boiling water, these are really hard to get on. I've pushed this hose on a reasonable amount, maybe an inch or so, and it's certainly enough for the clip, but it's not ideal, so I promise to come and fix this later on. Okay, look away now. I promise I do know what I'm doing, but this really isn't recommended, so definitely don't do this at home. I've, uh, I've cleaned out the bilges now, I've, um, I've hoovered out, hoovered out or sucked out the last bit of uh, water. So the next job this week is to cut off all of these screws that were left after removing the floorboards. It's a pretty easy process, but it is a bit smelly and dusty. It's always the problem with uh, with battery powered power tools uh, that I borrowed the grinder from uh, from from the uh, workshop here in in the, in the basin, and uh, it's got a battery of course, and uh, the battery's flat. So I've just started, uh, and the battery's flat already. But no, never mind. It's a really good it's a good job. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting off um, these things. So if you remember in that video. Uh, we um, used a hole saw to cut through the floorboards uh, around the screws which were all rusted and stuck into the joists 
uh, we cut around them and then it left this kind of plug on top of the joist. Now I've been walking around on top of these joists for a while and um, and every time I uh, step on one of them it's kind of it sticks into my foot so I've been really glad to get rid of these. But these are yeah the top of the joists so I don't need to screw into those joists anymore because I have a plan about how I'm going to put the next floor down um, and that plan includes how um, the the floor will be um, uh, will be sectioned so I can lift pretty much the entire floor up apart from underneath actually underneath um, a bit of uh, bit of the wall the internal wall uh, so I've got a plan for that um, but yeah I need to cut these off and then the joist will just be supports for the uh, for the flooring um, they won't be screwed into um, yeah so I guess I've got a little way to wait until I can um, do the rest of the grinding but uh, yeah. I'll do a bit of uh, wire brushing maybe instead. Oh my goodness, it is absolutely torrential rain outside. Like lashing rain, like you get in a film. Um, I was just outside, um, I, I just cleared out the gutters uh, for the drain around the engine room. Uh, I just cleared out all of that blockage out and then it started chucking it down. Uh, I kind of realised that was going to happen because uh, it's, uh, it's been a weather warning. Um, but I wanted to get the uh, the runoffs, the gutters clear, which I've done. So thankfully all the water should be shipped out quite quickly. But, um, but then somebody arrived with a delivery for another boat. So I stood there waiting while they tried to scan it and all that kind of stuff. And it was absolutely in the lashing rain and every kind of wave of rain was like a wave coming over you, like the sea. It just kind of took the, it took the wind out of you. So I put my jacket on, but I'm actually just as wet out underneath as I am on top, but it kind of keeps the cold off a little bit. But yeah, it's, it was, but a few minutes ago, it was blue sky and really sunny, but now it's absolutely stormy. It's ridiculous. So I'm going to do a little bit of a show and tell of all the things that I've got recently and it's really exciting. Um, so here is my new waste tank. Now this is, uh, it's not the biggest waste tank in the world, it's 370 litres. Um, but it is uh, it's big enough to last me, um, I've calculated that I think if I flush the toilet, if it's just me on board and I flush the toilet, uh, every, you know, a, f a few times a day, uh, an average number of times a day, um, and the type of the num the amount of water it takes, uh, then it will it will last at the most a month. Uh, however, that's not in practice. That's not going to happen. It, you know, it'll be a, it'll be a sh a less time than that. Uh, but also, I have three um, inlets here uh, that I've got got the company to put on. The company is Tech Tanks, um, and they're information is there or there um so tech tanks have put this all together for, for me and um, so i have um i've uh, worked out what kind of gauge i want so in the side in the middle here there's a, a sender like a gauge inside and that tells me how much it's how, how full it is uh, and then i've worked out the position of all of these uh, outlets and inlets so this these two here that is a, a vent that goes up to the uh, the deck and I'll show you the vent deck fitting in a minute. This is the pump out that goes to the deck. So that's on, on the starboard side where it's going to live. There's also another pump out on the other side. Now the vent uh, doesn't have, that just has a connection through the tank um, and it just, you know, kind of it's at the top of the tank because that allows the, um, the, the some air to get to the contents of the tank. You know what I mean by the contents of the tank. Um, but the, the good thing about having some fresh air in there is that it reduces smells. Um, it allows the, the tank to breathe and okay, there'll be a, a small little smell coming out of the, the vent, but it's, it's fine. But anyway, some fresh air in there helps it breathe. I also have a pump out here and on the other side of the pump out there is a, a tube that goes all the way down to the bottom so it's actually sucking from the bottom. So that will pump out on the starboard side, the vent on the starboard side. On the end of the tank there is a pump out at an angle fitting to go all the way into the floor and up the other side to the port side and that will have a hole fitting on the port side that I can undo and pump out from there as well. Um, it has three spare or three extra inlets here as well. Um, so there's actually the toilet inlet here, um, but there's three other inlets. 
so four in total. The three other inlets are for the three pumps that are going to be around the boat and they are the two sinks, the bathroom sink, the kitchen sink or the galley sink and the bath or the shower bath. Um, so I will be able to divert them using a Y valve uh, either over the side, so when I want to when I want to empty the sink, I have to have electricity to do it. It's not a gravity-fed system anymore. But that's a that's a um, that's a trade-off I'm happy to accept. Somebody asked me a while ago, well, what happens if your power goes and you need to empty the sink? Well, you know, then I'll be a bit stuck. However, the water is supplied by a pump which needs power, so I probably wouldn't be able to fill the sink anyway. So you know, that's okay. There is uh, my neighbour has another boat uh, near me. And she has a hand pump uh, as well as an electric pump. So she can actually hand pump from her water tank. And that was the original system. And then it has a gravity system. So for her, it works really well because if she has no power, she can still hand pump into the sink and then gravity feed. But for me, I'll have some gulper pumps that pump them out. Now, those pumps are on back order. Everything is on back order at the moment. It's a nightmare getting anything at the moment. Um, and so I was given like a tw t 12 week lead time for those, which will take us to the end of November. Uh, but that's OK. I, I actually am not ready for them anyway. So I was happy with that. Anyway, so I've got the pump out. I've got the vent for that side. I've got the, 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 the pump out for the port side on that side. I've got three inlets for the for the gulper pumps for the bath for the bathroom two and the galley and then i've got a toilet inlet and i've got another outlet at the bottom and it's a little bit like one of these pump pads but it is just a, um, a you know an outlet straight straight up the bottom and that is going to be connected to a waste pump and so the the waste pump will, is an inline diaphragm pump uh, so it doesn't actually pump around the pump it just it uses a diaphragm to push it through and so that will go to a hull fitting on the outside of the boat and that means that if I want to purge the tank if I want to empty it completely and I am out at sea I'd be able to um, open the seacock and then I'll be able to press a button to pump the entire contents of the tank out now I can't see myself really ever using that but it is there in case I do need to um, the situation might be that I imagine I'm coast hopping, I'm going from harbour to harbour and there's no pump out system there at all. It means then I can go into harbour, I can you know use the, use the tank for a while and then I can go out to sea, purge the tank and then pull into the next harbour. Uh, and that, that's kind of, that sort of proofs it against, uh, or, or future proofs it against any, any sort of problems. So uh, what I've also got um, for the fresh water, I have this uh, this Jabsco um, Par Max 3 freshwater pump and so this pump is the the pump it doesn't actually pump the water into the sink really what it does is it creates pressure in the system so when you turn the tap on the pressure pushes the water out and the pump actually keeps that pressure high so um so I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to take it out just yet because I'm not ready but there's the pump it's in there to go along with this pump um, I also uh, have bought a, um, an expansion tank or an accumulator tank. Um, so what this means is that uh, if I had, if I, it, so this pump uh, is designed to keep the pressure in the system. So if I have the tap on really low, like it's trickling water out, these pumps tend to go on and off a lot because it doesn't need to build up a huge amount of pressure. It's not full on. Um, so it kind of, they tend to um, sort of, you know, kind of go on and off a lot. Uh, they oscillate a lot so they're kind of constantly boop, boop, boop and it's not good for a pump to be on and off a lot. So I've got an accumulator tank as well and lots of boats have these as well or lots of boats and RVs and things but the idea with this is that it is like a buffer if you like. So this is in line with the pump and the pump uh, the pump will create this pressure. Uh, usually the pressure is kept within the system within system pipes and it kind of pushes them all out so it's got some pressure inside it but this thing actually has a diaphragm in the middle so when the water pressure is pushed in here the diaphragm will distend and it will push into the rest of the the chamber and it provides it with a much better buffer if you like a much better re reservoir for pressure and it means that this this will be pushed up and then uh, as the tap runs it will continue to push a little bit the pump doesn't need to run and then pump kicks in and fills it up again a, a little bit I don't know if you know, it's a little bit like circular breathing for didgeridoos, maybe a bit like that. Anyway, so it also has a, a valve to set the pressure in here so you can set different pressure. So I have that one as well, and that's great.
what I've also got are um, the start of the nav lights. So I've been looking for navigation lights for a long time and trying to find the ones that look right. And I finally found these ones and they're eye-wateringly expensive. They're like 60 quid each, you can't believe it. However, they are on the outside of the boat and they, they will set the boat off. And I think they're really lovely. They're exactly what I wanted. Um, they are um, LED lights. They're the, the, obviously you've got the green and red um, the navigation side navigation lights and um, so they they will go on um, I need to drill a hole through the side of the boat and then they'll sit on the side and they'll look beautiful and I also have exactly the same one that's a solid white light for the stern light and that will go on the back of the uh, the rudder so they they're beautiful as well I'm really really happy with those and um, I have to admit I cannot wait until the first time that I can turn all the nav lights on it'll be really nice I can put them on at Christmas even as well So I also mentioned the uh, the vent for the tank. Um, so on the starboard side of the deck, there will be two fittings. There is one for the pump out, so that's where the hose gets attached to the pump. And then the other one is a vent, and that allows some air to get into the tank to reduce the smell. So this is a, um, a shell type of vent. Oh, it's actually not even open. I'm gonna open it for you right now. And so isn't that beautiful? Yeah, beautiful for a, for a waste tank vent. Um, so this uh, this just has a hole in there and it allows uh, air to, to get in. But then my deck is slightly cut, slightly angled upwards so this will sit just sort of upwind. So any water washing down will, will not really go down the hole. It doesn't really matter if it does go down the hole but I just kind of rather it didn't fill the tank up. Um, but that doesn't really matter. Um, so I have that um, and I also have um, the fitting which allows me to uh, to screw that on and then put the put the hose into the tank there. So that's that. That's really lovely. That shell type um, vent. Put it in there to keep it protected. I also have um, some pump out uh, deck fittings as well. So this again is where I can put my hose on. So this will be on the outside of the boat. And so I'm kind of hoping that the screw pattern or the bolt pattern is the same on, on the existing ones. Uh, the existing ones are sort of roughly okay, um, although it ha we have two, and one is uh, one is the pump out, and next to it, instead of a vent, it actually has a, a flush, um, and so that is sometimes used to flush water into the system and to pump out, um, and it means that you don't have to flush it through the system. But I'm not going to have that particularly. Uh, I'm just going to have a vent. It didn't have a vent previously, and it really needs one. The other danger as well is that the tank expands uh, with the... Uh, biological activity going on. So um, so yeah, so I have these with the standard key fitting and they're really beautiful. The final thing that I've got is the um, is a gauge for the for the waste tank. I'm not going to take that out either because uh, it's all packed up um, and if I take something out I'll just get dusty anyway. Um, so this is a, a gauge like a fuel gauge but it's a, a waste tank contents gauge. Um, so, so this will tell me when the tank is getting getting full. Um, the only the only wrinkle is the only weirdness is that with this tank, um, the the sender unit, the the thing that goes in the tank, is not actually long enough to fit the entire tank. So it's mounted in the top section of it. So there will be some part of the um, the the gauge or the the time when the tank will be being filled, but the gauge won't move. Uh, but that's okay because it's just the top end so it's way it'll warm me when it's getting full and it'll just be maybe like you know it'll just take a little while for the, the needle to start to move but that's good too so um so yes yeah, so i've got all that the other thing that i've got which is just in a box and it's just behind there um so i'm not going to get it out right now is the toilet i managed to to get the toilet on order a little while ago and they said as well it was going to be like three months but it actually came in a few weeks anyway so that's brilliant so i've got that in there and that is a raw water flush because the toilet uses water from, from the outside. Outside the boat through a hole fitting, through a stopcock, and then uses that to flush and then that gets all pushed into the tank. And um, so it's a raw water flush. It's a, it's a ceramic toilet, so it's very much like a domestic toilet. It has the same sort of experience, uh, which I think is important um, uh, and uh, it doesn't, doesn't put off guests. But also, you know, it's, it's, you, you like to have a bit of you sit on it quite often, so it's nice to have some some kind of some bit of luxury. 
so uh, so yeah so I've got that too um, so to get all of this stuff working what I need to do next is I need to I need to get all of the floors and stuff uh, finished so the process for getting the bathroom done is to uh, put all the floors down um, and then I can start putting the walls up and I can start fitting things I can start fitting the pumps and all that kind of stuff But to get the pumps running I need the electrics on the boat and to get the electrics running I need to fit all the electrics up here uh, so that is like the inverter and uh, the, um, the Isolation transformer and the bus bars and all of that kind of stuff I need to fit those and also the batteries need to be fitted in the engine room as well so I need to do all of that to actually get the power to be able to run these things. Um, so I think that's kind of what I'm going to try and work on work on now. So I need to I need to try and get the bathroom a bit more sorted. Uh, but I think I'm going to do the floor uh, through the front and try and line up the front section. Um, and then I'm going to try and get the electrics in as well. And it means I can start wiring up all of these lights as well, um, which will be good too and I can start running them off battery which is uh, which is also good so that's my show and tell over with um, and uh, and yeah so it's been a bit of a quiet week uh, we've not really done a huge amount of stuff uh, there's been a few jobs but uh, to be honest I've been absolutely shattered after getting out of the yard uh, it was uh, brilliant it was brilliant to get that stuff done and I'm always impressed with MSO's uh, incredible engineering and their skills and everything uh, so if you need any if you need any steel boat stuff done, go and see them. It, you know they they're always busy, uh, and uh, and sometimes it takes a while for you to to actually get into the yard, uh, because they've just got so much work on. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it just it's the best. It's brilliant. Anyway, that's it for this week. I think next week I'm going to try and actually get on with some proper jobs uh, with some uh, some kind of end results. So I think next week I'm going to try and get the, the floors rust treated and hopefully even a coat of paint on them. Well, that's the goal. Anyway, I hope wherever you are, you're safe and you're well. And I'll see you next time for more jobs. <laughs>